Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we're going back to trades, my friends. We've been doing a whole lot of over-under stuff, some betting stuff. Last year, I'm going to be doing trades. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pick a player from every team that I think is most likely to be traded in the 2022-23 season. This doesn't mean it's going to happen. I'm not creating a rumor that it's going to happen. Although I'm usually, you know, fairly accurate. And as you watch, some of the teams I'll have like three guys and then I'll try to pick the one most likely one. But it's going to be fun. This is part one. We're going to do from Anaheim to Minnesota. Now, last year, as I was just talking about, I do some betting videos as well. Last year... I uh, made on an average, depending on what most of my the people that I give bets to decide to wager, about six thousand dollars in NHL sports betting. Six thousand. That's about average for me. If you if you want to make like six thousand dollars and you've got about oh probably somewhere around four to five grand to start off with, and you want to just you know intelligently bet to make money, not gamble. I'm not into gambling. Comment in the comment section. I'll put a link down there. You can go in for free and see what it's all about. But player to be traded from every team. Tell me what you would think. Maybe it's your team. Maybe it's not another team or whatever. Maybe you totally disagree with me. That happens. Happens a lot. A lot, a lot. Because I send these out to Facebook land and, uh, Woo, boy, sometimes they're not too happy with me, but that's the way it is. Uh, so why would you listen to me? Why would you listen to me? Well, if you look at previous videos, I'm fairly accurate. I had to fully go into Calgary long before it happened. I was talking about Patrick Kane being traded from Chicago over a year ago. If you look at my videos, if you go into my videos, look at Patrick Kane about a year ago. And people were like, why would they trade them? And I'm like, yeah, it's happening. So I guess that's why. I just happen to be accurate. And if you want to really find out, Pearl of Wisdom Show, come check it out. Sub up to the channel. I do live programs with Peyton on the radio, off the wall hockey, everything like that. And you can talk to me personally and tell me all about it, my friends. And I would be happy if you did that. We're starting off with Anaheim Ducks. Yeah, and no, I'm Ducks. Okay. There's a few players here that I think could be traded. Uh, two of the players that you might surprise you that I think could be traded are actually players that they just picked up. Ryan Strom and Fa Frank Vetrano. You're like, well, why would they trade them if they just picked them up? It'll be completely dependent on where they are at the deadline. This was a beautiful, these were beautiful moves by Verbeek. Because he could very well, and I'm not saying he did, but I think it's very possible that he talked to them and said, look, go out in the market, see how much you can get and how many years you can get. Come back to me and I'll add a year on to it. However, you have to be mindful that I may have to trade you at the deadline if we're out of it so we can pick up picks. So, I mean, I would do this if I was a general manager. Yeah, you, 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 Ryan Strom's getting five million till two thousand twenty-seven. There's a really good chance there was teams out there who weren't willing to go that long, and they said, "Okay, we'll give you another year." By the time the trade deadline comes around, now teams are like, "Well, maybe we do need Ryan Strom." <laughs> Injuries, what have you, and you can move on. And Ryan gets an extra year of security for his family. And gets to hang out in Anaheim for a year. That ain't so bad. Um, like I said, same as Frank Petrano. I'm not so sure he would have got two years for most teams out there. It's possible. But that's not the guy, that's not the guy I think most likely. Because the guy I'm going most likely here, I think they would may trade regardless of whether they're in a playoff spot or not at the deadline. That is Kevin Shattenkirk. Um, there's just two. He's just blocking Drysdale right now. 
And by the way, John Klingberg could be one of those guys as well that decides to move into a contender at the deadline, but used uh, Anaheim to get the most that he could this year. It's very possible. But I think Kevin Shattenkirk is just blocking Drysdale. And if they're in a playoff spot, they're going to want to give more minutes to him. Not to mention, they have some pretty young, good, good young defensemen coming up that also need to play. Mahura, Ole Levy, guys like that. And they can move Shattenkirk, and it probably wouldn't affect their team all that much and still be able to pick up a draft pick for him. So that's my most likely to be traded and uh, from the Ducks. He's a 2023 UFA, too. So they've got to re-sign him. And I don't necessarily see that happening. So I think it's just an easy way to pick up picks, regardless of whether they're in a playoff spot or not. Tell me what you think, Ducks fans. Comment in the comment section. Sub up to my channel. And let me know. Arizona. All right. This was pretty tough. Well, it isn't tough. Because it's a guy that's been rumored forever. Jacob Chikrin. Is this ever going to happen? Like, I'm sure, and Arizona fans out there are sick of hearing about Jacob Chikrin being on the trade block. Um, and Armstrong has never really put it to bed that he's not on the trade block. He's never said, no, we're not trading Jacob Chikrin. He's just basically said, if we trade him, it's going to cost you a crap load. Um, max pay, up, max like three first round picks. Now, for me, or three first round picks or the equivalent is basically what I've heard. That may drop a little bit. Now, to me, when I look at this, what this leads me to believe, if you've got a young player like Chikrin who is um, has a strong potential to be in Norris conversations in his future, he's only 24 years old, he's on a killer contract. And you're saying it's going to cost you a lot to get him. It isn't because they necessarily want to trade him. I think conversations have happened with Jacob Chikrin where he said, look, if we're going this direction, uh, if we're going to keep on rebuilding and you don't see this being a valid team five years from now or three years from now, say, I think I would like to move on. And maybe, and I would even go as far as to say Chikrin was the one in behind the scenes that kind of motivated this. And then he comes out and says, you're going to have to pay high for him. He, they, I understand the value. In other words, we don't really want to trade him. But if he really wants to move on, you're gonna, we're not going to just be pushed around by a player. And again, it never came out in any... And never came out in any publications. People are going to say, where are you hearing this from? I'm filling in the gaps. I could be totally wrong. But you have to ask yourself if what I'm saying sounds logical to you or not. If it doesn't, throw it out. Call me an idiot in the comment section. I don't care. I don't mind, actually. We're playing hockey here. This is hockey. It's not a nice, it's not a nicey nice sport. Okay? If you're looking for... If you're looking for someone to be all nicey-nicey, I'm not your guy. And I don't want you to be that guy or person, however it is, whatever it is. All right? Okay, Boston. Boston Bruins. Not much to trade away here. Uh, they're, they are pretty much trying to kind of go for it this year. So... Assuming they're in a playoff spot, and they freaking better be the way they set themselves up here. Um, the only player I could really see moving out of this whole lineup, because Jake DeBrusque is apparently staying, is Craig Smith. And there has been talk about that. And the reason why would not be because like Craig Smith is that he's not a 36-point player at 3.1 million. That's not too bad. It's just, I really think, and if you talk to Boston fans and listen to uh, re listen to writers in the Boston area, sports writers and stuff, which I do a lot of, let's face it, Boston's defense in the bottom half of this defense needs to get stronger, right? So I could see them using Smith and draft picks or whatever 
to get their defense where it needs to be. On a side note, if Swayman goes off, I could see Linus Allmark being used as well uh, to, for another backup goaltender, possibly, and, uh, you know, as well as adding to the defense as well. I know they don't have another backup that way. They would have to get a lesser backup, and people are going to say, well, what if Swayman, you know, falters in the playoffs? Well, if Swayman falters in the playoffs, you're screwed. You're not going to win anyways. This is a year where I think Boston really just has to gamble and hope. They're already doing that. You're gambling and hope, hoping that David Krejci can still play. You're gambling and hoping that Pavel Zaka can all of a sudden be a player that he wasn't in New Jersey, right? You're gambling and hoping that, that either Craig Smith can bring her back or Nick Foligno can get back to some semblance of his old self. Uh, you know, there's a lot of gambling and hoping done already. So you might as well keep it rolling and try to fill holes that are really important and just cross your fingers. I think that's really what Boston has to do here. But my pick would be Craig Smith. Boston fans, let me know in the comment section what you would pick as a player most likely to be traded. Buffalo Sabres. Um, this one is tough, too. Uh, there's not too many players. I, I think a lot of people would say Kyle Pozo, but I really think Kyle Pozo has found this place there in Buffalo. He's kind of, he's been through the grind and he's kept a positive attitude all the way through. I don't think it's impossible that he could be used here at the deadline if they're completely out of it. But I'm not so sure they will be, to tell you the honest truth. Um, there's going to be a, a, anyone of Detroit, Ottawa, or Buffalo are going to um, there are are going to be in that playoff spot, and probably all of them. And I think it's going to be a really tight race this year, in contrast to what happened last year. So, who do I think would most likely be traded? I can only go. I think it would be Victor Olafson, and that is simply because. Jack Quinn just knocks it out of the park. And I have a feeling he's going to. I mean, before he got injured, he looked absolutely sick, man. He looked so good. And I think it's quite possible he just pushes, uh, Tuck moves up to that top line, and he just pushes for top six playing time so much that Victor Olison is pretty much expendable. Because you, you don't want to play Victor Olison in the bottom six. He's terrible defensively. And there probably would be value out there for an offensive forward like him at the deadline, whether they're in a playoff spot or not. So they can kind of still, you know, make sure they make the playoffs, but also get a couple more picks to keep on building that system that is probably the best in the league. But nothing wrong with continuing to do so. So possibly also used if they are really in a good spot to get a goaltender. So... Look at, watch the whole video, all the videos, and kind of get the idea of where your team might be able to find a hole, fill a hole that you know in your head. Uh, Buffalo may need a goaltender still. You know, Craig Anderson is 41 years old. Eric Comrie's really only had one good year, you know. So it may work out. It, it, there is a, a decent possibility that at the deadline, if they're in, if they're really in a spot and I think it's possible with their defense and the way uh, the way Granado coaches is amazing this team can go to heights that uh, this year really could so if that's the case I think they're going to really probably look at a goaltender and I could see them using Olofsson in that spot tell me what you think Buffalo fans do you agree with me do you comment in the comment section sub yourself up Make sure you sub up to the channel in the YouTube channel, my friends. Okay. Calgary Flames. And this one is really tough because this team will, I think, is definitely going to need to add at the deadline. The team as it is right now could be good, could be really good. I don't I am not sold on the idea that it's as good as last year's team. And 
Uh, Calgary fans, I've, I've had arguments with them already, uh, which, you know, in all of this, I'm just, uh, I have an opinion. It's probably accurate. <laughs> Jonathan Huberto is not good defensively. Elias Lindholm is overrated defensively, and we're about to find out this year. We're about to find that out this year. But what is likely going to happen is that they're not going to do as well defensively, and they're, people are going to go, uh, what happened to Elias Lindholm this year? The truth of the matter is he was propped up last year, and Huberto is not going to prop him up that way, and neither is Toffoli. So I think this team is going to struggle defensively. Even though Sutter is there, I trust and I have faith in him to make this team as good defensively as it possibly can be. However, I don't have faith that it has the actual players to be as good as it was last year, at least in the forward group. As far as defense is concerned, it's fine. So now, all this ramble, what player is most likely to be traded? And I think most people would say Oliver Shillington. But I don't see anybody that's going to replace Oliver Shillington. Unless somehow Yusuf Valamaki turns it around or something like that. In which case then maybe I would agree with you. But I, I, I know in Sutter he's not going to want to trade any of his defensemen. Unless he gets a defenseman back in return. So my player would be Oliver Shillington if they get a defenseman back in return. But I actually, the player I actually have is not a player for any team yet. I think Calgary is most likely to trade their 2023 first round pick and get some a super strong two way forward to play up there with Huberto and Lindholm. That's that's really what I think they would uh, do more than anything. They've gone all in now. They made the move for Huberto. They made the move for Kadri. They're not trying to build for a couple of years. And to tell you the honest truth, they're not all that deep as it is as far as prospects are concerned. But if you're going to go this route, I think they'll probably go that route. So I think there might be the one of the most like most likely teams to trade their first round pick to get more offensive depth and a solid two-way forward to add to this group all right tell me what you think calgary fans what do you think of that huh what do you think of that carolina hurricanes there's only one player i could come up with here and it's just the player that's constantly on the trade block it seems although never gets traded and that's Marty Nietzsche. Um, I don't know what happened to him last year, uh, but if he doesn't turn it around, I imagine he'll... Carolina's the type of team that basically just takes care of... It, it, they don't make trades... How do I explain this? They make trades based on what's not working in the culture of the team. I think more than anything. It seems that way rather than necessarily what they need on ice, although that is an aspect of it. But they are a huge building of culture team. And for some reason, it just seems Marty Nietzsche is not fitting there. And I'm not saying he's going to get traded, of course, but out of all the players here that could be traded, I think he is most likely to be traded. There, There's... They don't have a lot to take. They, they don't have a lot ready, ready, ready at the moment to take a spot. That's the thing. Um, unless Noel Gundler can turn it around really quick or Ryan Suzuki, who's really, you know, slowly building up. Nobody's really ready yet. So if he were traded, it would probably be for a different winger or something of that nature or packaged with a pick for a better winger. But. That's the best I could come up with here because I think this team is pretty much set. All right, Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, man, we already know this, right? I mean, sad thing. Most likely to be traded is Kane. 
No doubt about it. Uh, and maybe Taves as well, you, depending on the year that Taves has. But I'm putting Kane as the most likely simply because his lore puts him at a highest at the highest value. Even more than Jonathan Taves, because Jonathan Taves has had injury issues, missed a year. There's a lot of question marks on what he can be now and how much stamina he has and all that, where there really isn't that with Kane. And there's a lot of general managers out there that still see Kane as a superstar. Now, he, he, he puts up great offensive numbers. I'll give him that. However, if you look at the underlying stats, he's kind of a cherry picker. In fact, he's very much a cherry picker. Um, his defensive play in the last two, three years is so bad. Like, worst in the league, top six bad. So bad. But people don't care. And you're still going to get high value for him. And this team is going to be out of it by so far that it would just seem so likely that Patrick Kane will be traded. And I don't, I know you guys don't want to hear that anymore. You know, I bet you're getting to the point where you're just like, would you do it already so we don't have to listen to it anymore? <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. But I got to say it because I'm doing most likely to be traded for every team. Uh, make sure you're subbing up, you guys. Sub up and tell me what you think down there in the comment section about the prospect of Kane being traded and all of those sort of things like that. Don't be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. You can say what you want because I don't get my feelings hurt. Next, Colorado Avalanche. And this was actually pretty tough. But I, I had to come up with two and I'm, I, I came up with two. And I'm not really sure. I, I, I keep on going back and forth of which one's most likely. So when they picked up Yvonne Rodriguez for $2 million for one year, I believe Alex Newhook will take that spot and Rodriguez will end up being playing on the third line. In which case, it puts JT Comfer in a really awkward spot as a third line winger making $3.5 million a year with guys like Maltsev scratching the surface, to, scratching to come in. Martin Kaut, it's time. You know, Ben Myers, they've got guys that can probably take that role at a cheaper, cheaper rate. And it's possible they could need goaltending. Alexander Gorgiev, we'll see. However, the other player I had was Samuel Gerrard, and I think a lot of people have heard his name out there a lot already. But it's the main reason why Gerrard's name, I think, is out there a lot is because of Bowen Byram. Bowen Byram is probably overall a better player than Gerrard, will be at the same age. Gerrard's making a beautiful contract, and between the two of them, if you were, there's lots of value in Comfort still, and there's tons of value in Gerard. So what I could see is Bo and Byron moving up there, and them packaging both Comfort and Gerard, maybe a pick, and bringing in like a killer right defenseman, and or or another forward or something of that nature. I could see that happening. So I kind of have both of them. But I don't, and I don't really know which one is more. I think probably JT Comfort I would put as the most likely, but they're both pretty close to each other, I think. And what kind of freaking luxury do you have that you can, you have somebody that can replace Samuel Gerard in your top four? I mean, he's a freaking amazing defenseman. I know if I was a general manager in the league and Gerard was available, I'd be calling like crazy. Hello? Yeah, I'll talk to you. Yeah, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Next, Columbus Blue Jackets. And this was, I think a lot of people are going to say Jake, uh, Jacob Barczyk. I just don't see them anybody taking that. You'd have to retain his, some of his contract. Um, you just brought him in. And he loves Columbus and all of that. The guy I think that's most likely is a free agent next year. And I think if, especially if Columbus is out of it, 
which is a good chance that they still will be, even though they added what they added. Uh, because their defense is still pretty young and not really strong yet. But Gustav Nyquist, I think, would be the guy. Retained at the deadline, they can probably pick up a draft pick for him. He's somebody that they could move either way to make room for Kent Johnson. Uh, if they continue to play him as a left winger, I think they'll probably play him up the middle and maybe Boone Jenner can take that spot. The fact of the matter is they have a lot of young players coming up. Gustav Nyquist is not really necessary for this lineup. So I could see him being the guy that they move. Uh, next, Dallas Stars. And there's only one guy in this lineup. I, they're, they're so... They, they have so many bad contracts that are pretty much immovable, like Jamie Benn and Sagan. Um, Joe Pavelski's not a bad contract, but you're not going to trade him after signing him. It's just, that would be terrible. Unless he says, unless they're right out of it, and I don't think they, they're, it's very likely that Dallas is going to be right out of it at the deadline. And you talk to Joe and say, oh, hey, you know, how would you like to go try a cup somewhere else? Maybe Maybe that could happen. But besides that, I don't see anybody really getting traded here except for Dennis Guriana. Maybe Marion Studnik if he can put up a decent year. And I think they would be traded with a draft pick for a better winger to help out on the uh, in that top that bottom nine that can bring some more offense. Um, but it's been a lot of talk. Dennis Gurianov has been given a long rope here. If he doesn't go off this year, I think there's a really good chance there's a team out there that would give him a little more rope. Uh, you know, a team that's rebuilding, give him a young, you know, take a get uh, that'll give him like a mid round pick for him or something like that and give him a shot. Or he could be used for a team that's looking to rebuild to get an older player, and that's what I think is most likely, to get an older player that can play in this lineup and fit him in the cap somehow to keep on trying to win a cup in Dallas. Unless Jake Ottinger goes off, 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 I don't see that happening, but that's for another day. All right. The Detroit Red Wings. And this is going to surprise a lot of people. There's three players I have on this list. First, if Zadina doesn't turn it around, the, 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 this could be the year, again, to, to move on somewhere else to a really bad team like Chicago or something like that, where he can continue to try to become the player like they always hoped him to be. That's possible. Um, Pia Suter would probably be my most likely candidate. This is odd, actually, because I'm going to talk about my second most likely candidate last because I think it's the one that is the most, that's most going to perk your ears up and go, what, what, what? Um, but Pia Suter would be my most likely simply because it's, they're running out of spots for Pia Suter. He's a good little player. No doubt about that. But he's kind of a guy that you could put all over your lineup and they sort of already have enough of those guys I think for the most part he's best in somebody's top six and there'll be a team out there that can really use PS Suter's two-way game pot in a couple points and pot in a couple goals that they would be able to get a draft pick for if they're out of it which I don't know if they will be or use them him to get maybe another more experience forward if they're really in a strong playoff race. So he would be my most likely. But the one the the one that's gonna maybe make a lot of people go, hmm, is Ben Chirot. And you're gonna be like, we just got Ben Chirot. We gave him a long contract. Did you say you're just gonna trade him right now? Um maybe not this year, but maybe this year. But I don't think he's going to be in Detroit for the extension of this whole contract. He's got a 10-team no-trade list. And I found it to be one of the oddest pickups that Steve Eisenman's ever done because he is a serious uh, analytics guy. 
Ben Chirot is not good defensively. He's actually better offensively than he is defensively. And I know the optics are, what people are saying are, is, well, they got Ben Chirot to help out Maurice Sider. I think it's actually, and I mentioned it in another video I did, I think it's the exact opposite. I think they're hoping that Maurice Sider rubs off on Ben Chirot. Ben Chirot over checks, is over aggressive to the point where he is poor defensively. Now, fans love him because he hits lots. He uh, blocks lots of shots, mostly because he puts himself out of position and has to scramble back and block the shot, which is say, well, he's willing to block shots. Most players are willing to block shots. The whole point, though, is you don't want to be blocking a lot of shots. You want to limit the amount of shots you have to block. Ben Chirot does not do that. Maurice Sider does do that. So if Ben Chirot can learn how to play more like Maurice Sider, you can put this aside. I think that they would be happy to keep him for the extension of this contract. Here's the next thing. Ben Chirot gets huge value at deadlines. Florida gave up a first-round pick for him last year, and they pretty much knew he was going to be a rental. And I don't even understand that because Bill Zito also is an analytics guy, but that's another story altogether. Somebody out there is going to give Ben Chirot, because of the package of skill that he has, he can skate, he hits, he hurts people. people there are still general managers out there that put a way higher value on that than I think is necessary. And I think Stevie Eisenman knows this. So he has an opportunity to come in and say, look, Ben, you could be an amazing defenseman. You could improve in so, so much, and he could. I want you to watch what Maurice Sider does in certain situations. We're gonna, we want you to learn to not be so aggressive, to not pinch so much in so many areas and all of those sort of things like that. And if he does, maybe he sticks around. But you've got, our, you've got Edvinson coming up. Uh, how many? What? How many other defensemen? Volander, Donovan Sabrango. I mean, there are there are defensemen coming up like crazy here in this organization. That I easily, as far as I'm concerned, can take a guy like Ben Chirot's spot. So we'll see. But that's my talk on Detroit. Tell me in the comment section what you think, Detroit fans, Edmonton Oilers. And I'm going to name three because they're the three that keep on coming up. I am an Edmonton Oilers fan, and you hear a lot about the Edmonton Oilers and what they're going to do. Puglia Harvey's name comes up. I hope the hell they're not. He's their best two-way player. And you get slammed by that by people who don't care about analytics. Because when you watch him, your eye test, uh, an average fan's eye test, Sees a guy that doesn't hit very often. He uh, he has, he struggles with the puck on his stick in the offensive zone. He seems like he's behind the play. Until you actually look at why those things are the case. He is a positional monster. He's always in the right position. He hits, but only when it's necessary. His whole goal is to get the puck off the opposition stick, and he's actually really good at it. Um, where people don't like it is when he's playing on a top line, he's not putting up points. Most of the reason why I see that that's the case is because he doesn't fly the zone. He may actually have to take a little more risk to play up on that top line. Because right now he's kind of pigeonholing himself into an extreme elite defensive winger. And uh, if he, if he want he, to extract some offense, he may have to take some risk. Because what happens is McDavid or Dreisaitl and them, they quite often fly the zone. And he doesn't understand it. Like, he, he, it's just not in him to do that. And then he ends up tailing the play. By the time the puck gets to him, he has very little time to get it off a stick. So I wouldn't trade him because they don't have guys like that in Edmonton. Really. Uh, Zach, actually they do. Zach Kleiman, 
Ryan Nugent to a lesser extent. Ryan Nugent Hopkins is good. Zach Hyman and Puya Harvey. But the thing is, is the more you have, the better. The next one is Yamamoto. If Kaylor Yamamoto doesn't bring his offense up this year, I think he could be used to add more defense to this team. And I would prefer that they use Kaylor Yamamoto. He's not as good defensively as Puya Harvey. Uh, look at that. Puli Arby had 36 points last year. Kaylee Yamamoto had 41. And everybody loves Kaylee Yamamoto. Why do they love Kaylee Yamamoto? Because he is a guy that flies his own and he stays up with the offense. Of, he, he stays up with the offense and he flies his own to the peril of the defensive side of the game. But people see him in the zones because he is with, he's playing with everybody else. See what I'm saying? So they like that. It looks good. It looks good on the eyes, but it's not the best. I would rather, I, I think they're in a position where they could use Yamamoto to get some defense myself. But the biggest one, and the one that's talked about most in Edmonton, is Tyson Berry. And as it stands, I doubt he'll get traded because his contract makes it very difficult to trade. He's mostly a third-pairing defenseman. But if Philip Broberg, and from what I'm understanding, is Philip Broberg likes to play on the right side. And if he can adapt to the right side, it makes Barry kind of obsolete. In which case, I would put Tyson Barry as the most likely to be traded for, I don't know, I don't even know what, though. That's the thing. I don't know what you would get for Tyson Barry. Tell me in the comment section what you think. Tyson Berry could get out there. It's a weird. It, it, it's it's hard to put for me to put a value on him. Okay, next. Panthers, Florida Panthers, and this one is I talked about it in another video I already had. It's really easy. Sam Bennett is likely not going to be there. They need defense really bad. You can't go a whole year with Mark Stahl and Radko Gudis and Carlson and Montour. you got to add to that defense. After losing Uyghur, it was very difficult. for That's a difficult choice to make, to lose Uyghur, to get Matthew Kachuk in the trade that they made. I would have did it personally, but I would have done that. Um, but I just think Sam Beniska is only 26 years old. He's on a decent contract for the next couple of years. I think you can get a very good defenseman for a center like that. And I think that's probably going to happen. I really do. If, out of all of the, think all the trades that I'm talking about here with all these teams, I think that's, to me, the most likely one to happen. Tell me what you think, Florida Panthers fans. Who do you think is most likely to be traded off the Florida Panthers? LA Kings. And this one is kind of weird. I just put it this way. Right D. One of their right D is likely to be traded. Um, to acquire a left defenseman. Because you can't have Alexander Adler there. Like he, 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 he barely is able to make it a full year, it seems like now. Sean Walker's good, but he's not great. And right D is one of the most valued positions out there. And as it turns out, LA's got a crap load coming up, man. They have a crap load of right defensemen. They have Spence as a right defenseman. They have Mo Rare also. Oh, sorry, he's a left defenseman. But they have Spence coming up, and in their prospects, they and they have Grons and Brant Clark, who may or may not be ready right away, but they will be ready eventually. I, I love those two guys, and they're going to be absolutely fantastic. So within their depth, they could either trade from that to get a left defense. They need a better left defenseman than Michael Anderson. There's a reason why... Mikey Anderson only got one million. 
contract because he's not really a number one left defenseman. It, it's their biggest weakness. And it's a great weakness to have because they'll be able to get – there's left defensemen out there you can get. Left defenseman is one of the easiest positions to fill. So – if you've, especially if you've got right defensemen to trade, you have all the weapons in the world to grab an awesome left defenseman out there. And uh, there's been talk of Chikrin, and you can name a whole bunch of other ones down there in the comment section that you would like to see on LA. Make sure you do that. Sub yourself up. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. And not to mention, I'm going to be doing these videos, all kinds of videos like this forever. So you want to be part of it, right? Of course you do. All right. Finally, the Minnesota Wild, and I couldn't find anybody. The only person I took is the one that everybody seems to be wanting want to trade in Minnesota, and that is Matt Dumba. People don't like Matt Dumba in Minnesota at all. There are people that do, but man, oh man, every time I talk about trading somebody in Minnesota, it's like Dumba, 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 Dumba. Trade Dumba, got to trade Dumba. How about Dumba? How about Dumba? How about now? How about now? How about now? So, I don't know if it'll ever happen. I mean, they just went through two. They protected them through two expansion drafts. One of them, they gave up like Alex Tuck. And there was another player too. Crazy amounts of uh, pros, uh, picks and stuff to protect him, to keep him. I think this organization absolutely loves, loves, loves him. And I, I just, because of that, I find it highly unlikely that he'll be traded. But I don't see anybody else getting traded in this lineup. Uh, you're not trading Spurgeon. You're not trading Middleton. You're not trading anybody in this lineup that I can see. So the one I chose was the one everybody wants traded. There you go. The most likely to be traded is the one that everybody wants traded, Matthew Dumba. Sub yourself up. Tell me what you think, Minnesota fans. That's my full 42. That's all I got to give you today. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.